Recorded at a top secret studio that no pony knows the location of. This is BNN. Mares and gentle colts, welcome to another episode of BNN. And because I've seen this discussion in the comments on my videos multiple times now, I'll just go ahead and address it. It's gentle colts with an L. I get that. Let me go ahead and let you in on a little secret about my top secret identity. You see, my studio may be in a top secret location that no pony knows about. But I'll go ahead and spill the beans and let you know that I am from Arkansas. And sometimes, as Southerners, our pronunciations are a little bit different than you other folk. So I'm sorry, I'm definitely not implying that anybody is a coat, or a blanket, or any other article of clothing. Anyway, today, see, it's, it's hard to stop. <clears throat> anyway, today I have a real treat for you. For the first time in the history of the Brony News Network, we have actual guests on the show. That's right, guests that were crazy enough to appear on my show. Crazy. Well, how crazy am I? Well, on a scale of this... Here's Johnny! ...to this... <laughs> Probably somewhere in the middle. Mayors and General Coats, continuing our Unicon disaster fallout coverage, we've seen a disastrous domino effect. You see, it was reported recently that Tara Strong, my personal favorite voice actress of all time, was just one of the people wronged by Unicon staff. Well, due to the way she was treated, she's now canceled her appearance at upcoming pony convention Big Apple PonyCon, which is actually run by several of the people from BronyCon. Now, she'll still do a Skype interview for the fans there, but she's officially not appearing at that convention. So, good job to the dicks that ran Unicon. Spectacular! In fact, on a scale of how much you're disliked by it now by the Brony fan base, you're probably just above this guy. <laughs> And just below this guy. Oh, I won't ask for much this Christmas. I won't even wish for snow. I'm just gonna keep on waiting underneath the mist. So anyway, Tara will no longer be attending Big Apple Pony Con, and there's no telling how many other voice actors will cancel their appearances at smaller cons because of this. So once again, good job. I'm searching for a word to describe the people who ran Unicon, but uh, it's just what they did to Tara and the other guests. I, I, I just can't come up with a word to describe them. So I'll let Joey Tribbiani from the cast of Friends come up with one. You jackass. That'll work. Mayors and gentle colts, I've come down to an interesting conclusion. You see, as I just reported, Big Apple PonyCon is now down one guest since Tara Strong will not be showing up. And they're kind of getting down to the wire. Big Apple PonyCon is in just a couple weeks. 13 days to be exact. So, mayors and gentle colts that are on the convention staff, you ponies are in kind of a pickle. Where on earth are you going to find a guest to replace Tara Strong? I mean, it's not like there's just some amazing journalist out there who would gladly do a live recording of his award-waiting show at your convention that Saturday. Oh, wait. There's me. Now, I'm not saying that I can fill Tara's shoes, but uh, I do happen to wear a size 13s, if you know what I mean. So. If you find yourself needing another guest for Big Apple PonyCon, feel free to contact me. My email is in the description below this video, and I'll be waiting. <coughs> Hello? Excuse me for a second, everyone. That's my lawyer. Yes? Oh. I'm not allowed to wink at the camera anymore? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. A coma, you say? Well, that is pretty serious. I, I guess the, the audience, some of them just can't handle my awesomeness. Well, I'll, I'll try to tone it down. Okay, thanks. Bye. 
Sorry about that. And now we get to the hot tamale of today's show. I've actually managed to snag a quick interview with Josh and Justin, two representatives from PonyPlushies.com. Find out who these cool colts are in the following interview, but be warned, they're pretty awesome. I guess uh, we'll just go ahead and start off with some introductions. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves, Josh and Justin? Tell us who you're with. Sure, Josh, go ahead. I'm Josh. I'm from Houston, Texas. Um, I started Pony Plushies with Justin, uh, and I kind of uh, went away from internet marketing, and I've been focused on um, the plushies and going to conventions and that kind of stuff. Aside from um, the plushies and bronies, uh, in my spare time, I like to play Ultimate Frisbee and video games and basketball. Cool. Cool, cool. Uh, I'm Justin. I do a lot of the uh, online customer relations stuff and uh, a lot of the site development. Um, like Josh said, we started Pony Plushies back um, probably in uh, January of last year and uh, started it with some friends of ours. Just we thought it would be a fun thing to do and it's kind of grown from there and really taken off to somewhere we can be proud of it. What, uh, keeping with introductions, these guys, you said you started with friends. Uh... How, how big of an operation is PonyPlushies.com? Um, that large an operation. It's uh, mostly kind of uh, uh, just some people that we knew that were already involved in making... Uh, I'd say it's, it, yeah, it's under 15 people, but um, we, have, we have like a lot of friends and like good fans that will like support us. They'll... Uh, help with like customer support. Right. Or... As far as like how many people help to make pony plushies, I mean, we get commissions done all the time, and we get a lot of people helping from the community just because they, they like our product and like what we're doing for the fans. So we get a lot of different people involved helping us out. Yeah, uh, quality control was a major thing. We we really wanted like uh, the people working with us or our team members um, to to basically. Um, really uh, ha have like a really well designed set and we wanted to be really consistent in having um, the same fabric, the same layout and pattern and people that would um, help uh, bring bring it possible to be able to get so many uh, pony plushies out to all these bronies. How, how many orders do you guys typically fill in uh, let's say a month? Um, well, like we we get um, a fair amount on the website, um, like uh, like in between five and ten, it, it varies. Like Christmas, it went way up and such. But we actually most of our time is really working on the quantity for um, our supply at the conventions because that's uh, really uh, where we do the best. Okay, so you you guys yeah. actually hit up a lot of conventions then? Oh um, yeah, we've been going to quite yeah. a few of them. Um, it's it really uh, I guess it's the place people are most looking for Brony merch. So uh, they tend to really like our plushies there, and we do really well and get excited for them. So uh, we've been to quite a few. Our first was actually BronyCon, which was quite interesting because that was probably our largest as well. But um, we're doing Big Apple PonyCon later this month, and we've got tons more planned later this summer. We're gonna be trying to go to all of the major ones. How, how, yeah. how about uh, Sweet Apple Lakers Con? Have you looked at that one? Yeah, yeah we have looked at We plan on going to that one. Yeah, I, I applied um, for the vendor, and I think they got back to me with an email. I think, I think that was um, Sweet Apple Acres, at least. Um, there, there's a lot of them, kind of lose track. I think we've been to... How many, like five now? Five or six? We yeah, I, I think probably five. One of them was uh, a Miami convention instead of uh, a Brony convention, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, Equestria LA, in Miami. Gardens, Animate Miami, Las Pegasus, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I, I definitely, uh, I, I'm thinking, I've, I've definitely got plans to go to BronyCon this year. Uh, I'm, oh. look, I'm looking at Sweet Apple Acres Con. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about it. Uh, I actually contacted them to see if they would let me do a, a live show there on that Saturday, but uh, I haven't heard back from them yet, but uh, so you guys have hit at least five or six cons, and each one's been a pretty big success? Um, yeah, yeah, they, they, they've been doing pretty well um, so far. Um, Animate Miami and Las Pegasus, I mean, as, as I'm sure a lot of people know, weren't um, 
the biggest, uh, like, I guess, sales con uh, convention for the vendors? No, in fact, I heard... Uh... <laughs> I heard Las Vegas has had some. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and say difficulties. We we've gone over that in the last episode. <laughs> well, we're just leaving it at difficulties. <laughs> they had an interesting time. <laughs> oh yeah, they did. But uh, without rehashing any of that, like I said, we we did that last episode. Unicorn's a bad memory. <laughs> oh, yeah. All just right, so push it out of memory for now. Yeah, definitely. So what what kind of plushies? Uh, what which of the pony plushies do you sell the most of? Is it just a general mix, or do you have requests for more Twilights or more? I mean, it, it would probably be Fluttershy, just because she's been around for the longest, and people seem to like her as a plushie. Fluttershy's but, the most popular plushie, say, really? Yeah, well, uh, it has been for us so far. It, I mean, it wouldn't be fair to say like definitely Fluttershy we sold the most of. I know that, right. but. Um, it, th that's because we've had Fluttershy for the longest time, and um, only recently coming out with Rainbow Dash, and then before that, uh, Twilight Sparkle around the Candlelock Gardens, uh, like November's er era. Um, yeah. But um, Fluttershy is kind of uh, has been like our signature plushie. We've been promoting that the most because um, that that's kind of who, who we started when we were le uh, releasing leaks of the prototype. Uh, that we were doing, um, I, I, I say second would be um, like Twilight uh, and, and Rainbow Dash. Actually, they're kind of even. It's hard to say because we had two editions, two different editions of the Rainbow Dash. They they both uh, sold pretty well. Yeah, so. I think I think they both sold pretty well. I think Rainbow Dash is pretty popular. Um, we haven't really seen uh, a very strong preference recently. I mean, people kind of like. Uh, Different plushies for different reasons, from what I can tell. So. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. you got any plans to? I mean, Twilight's obviously gone through some changes. Have you? Uh, you got any requests for that yet? Um, we have had people asking about redoing Twilight. Um, our official position is that we're gonna wait as a minimum until we're done with the main six, because we don't want to get into redoing characters when we haven't even finished the ones we said we were gonna come out with. Okay. But uh, I think uh, we have Pinkie Pie as the next up for release, and she shouldn't be too long off. And then um, after that, we'll be doing Rarity and Applejack. And I think we'll probably um, see about doing Princess Luna um, first after the background character. Or, sorry, after the main six. Okay. But, um, she'll be she'll be an interesting prototype to do because she's so different. So. I don't really know how long that's going to take us to prepare. Yeah, I mean, well, you've got wings and horns to worry about with alicorns, so... Uh, yeah, and, and also, I mean, their manes are kind of different. You want to give them a bit of a, a deeper feel with, you know, the way they shimmer and have kind of a ethereal style to them. Especially on, like, Celestia and Luna, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well... But, um, they, they seem to be the most popular after the main six, so uh, we asked our fans, and they want to see Princess Luna, so we'll see what we can do. All right, now, um, do you guys actually do any of the sewing yourselves? Um, we helped with the prototype uh, designs. We don't actually do the sewing ourselves now. Um, I'm not very proficient in, um, in sewing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend's good at that kind of stuff, but um, yeah, not, me not so much at all. I, I just this is from Alec, uh, talent. You, you kind of need like some fine motor skills, which I uh, really lack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed every time. So, all right. Well, you've talked about uh, sort of steering back towards the future. You talked about Pinkie Pie is going to be your next release. As far as your immediate future is concerned. What's your next con that you're going to hit, you think? It's a uh, Big Apple Pony Con. It's on the weekend of the 24th, March 24th. Okay, so that's coming so up here in just a couple weeks. Yeah, it's, it's really soon. It's around the corner. Okay, cool. And cool. we haven't been to that one yet, so excited to see how, how it'll turn out. All right. And uh, do you guys, you guys will just have a booth that everybody can look for? What's everybody going to look for when they go to look uh, in the vendor's room for PonyPlushies.com? Who's, who's going to be um, there? 
We'll have we'll have a banner up and we'll have a booth. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to find us. I hope. I'm not actually sure um, what our location is though right now. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know the location exactly, but we should have a um, big pony plushies sign or something. You'll see me there. I'll be there with my girlfriend Jessica. Um, and uh, we might also have like a Brony merch sign somewhere. That's our our, our next big project, BronyMerch.com. Uh, we're working with a collaboration of other artists and vendors that we've been meeting at the conventions, hopefully to bring something together where uh, we can have like a one-stop shop uh, website for a lot of people to buy stuff on and uh, see other uh, talent, I guess, brony talent. Really? So you guys, uh, and when I say you guys, I mean both of you, everybody that's involved in PonyPlushies.com, you're actually working on a website with other merchants you've met at conventions where everybody can just sort of come in and shop for whatever merchandise yeah, they want? Um, we've been we've been talking to them for a while and uh, kind of had this idea on the back burner, but um, we've uh, started finishing everything and getting it ready now. Um, just as uh, kind of a... Uh, a way for artists to market themselves to other bronies because uh, a lot of them, uh, you know, could do with something like that. And uh, it's a very exciting project for us to get involved in because we don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, we, we basically um, want it to be like a marketplace kind of hub. And um, we, we were hoping to get like a pretty big, like a, or a fairly big distribution thing going on. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. I spoke to him. Um, we were talking about, uh, I wouldn't know if it's like fiscally uh, possible. Um, as of yet, I haven't looked into it that much. But um, if, if we could get a big group of vendors together to, um, or, or, or distributors to actually buy a license from Hasbro so we could sell everything legally, um, would be a pretty goal, good goal for us. Okay. Okay, well then, uh, are you both of you going to actually be at uh, Big Apple Pony Con? Uh, no, just, just myself and my girlfriend. Okay. Uh, so then, you guys have got this big website in the works that's supposed to be a hub, no pun intended, for, <laughs> for brony shoppers, and you're working with other artists. Uh, what's the soonest that you guys think this plan will come to fruition? When can bronies expect to see this uh, big website or expect the next announcement um, about it? it? It could likely be sooner, but uh, I would say by um, mid-June at the latest. Or sorry, mid-April, mid I meant. Um, it's, uh, some of the process, parts of the process are all ready to go, and then we're held up at some parts. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's, it's gonna Probably be within a week, thing. but like by mid month April. I, I, I think just um, it, it, in this concept, it would have to be a uh, well, I mean, maybe not so much with real time technology and social media, but uh, I, I would expect it to be somewhat gradual. Where, um, like with Plenty Fleshies, it kind of took a while for people to latch on to it. Um, I, I, I mean, I think just people are like, what's this website? Oh, okay. And then after a while, they're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. So I give them money and I get ponies? Okay, okay. And it, it's the worst. <laughs> oh, okay. That's legit. I'll do that. Nice. So, so um, yeah, I mean, these, these things take time. And um, they're really time-consuming projects for a lot of, like, effort and patience. But um, it, it, it's a fun company to work for. I wouldn't have it any other way. Okay. All right. Well, Mares and Gentle Coats, you have heard them. They will be at Sweet, uh, I'm sorry, Sweet, uh, Big Apple Pony Con, March 24th. Be looking for the Pony Plushies sign. Be sure to visit PonyPlushies.com and stay tuned in about a week or another uh, month or so and they'll have an announcement about this big hub collaboration of artists they've been talking to. Guys, I really want to thank you for being on the show. Really appreciate it and I hope to have you back in the future. Uh, thanks for having us. We thanks so much. Cool yeah, it was great. Yeah, guys, once again, this is Josh and Justin from PonyPlushies.com. Check them out. Awesome Fluttershy models. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone.